to a five-year-old. I have four kids, I should be good at this. I help companies think more clearly, change what they're selling to make more money, but more importantly, to make the world a better place. Lies, theft, stories. I work with ad agencies. I've never done this process with an ad agency before. So yes, I've worked with them and every ad agency I'm working with is trying to move beyond clumsy persuasion towards selling a pursuit. And that's the, that's the good thing. Because the lies and the theft that I talked about earlier, that's the old way of doing things. And no one buys that anymore. People want to buy people, ideas and trust. And so I'm working with a couple of ad agencies on, on changing what they do. But this is the first time I've used this process with one. I don't know. Because I did a bit of research and I thought you were a normal ad agency. Not bad, not good, just a run-of-the-mill ad agency. And what I've been struck by is a warmth and a passion for difference and change and innovation that I didn't expect. With the odd exception, actually. But on the whole, um, everyone's been fantastic and, and quite clearly don't want to be just a normal ad agency. Very, a, a massive level of honesty. I mean, genuinely uh, astonishing level of honesty. And, and that, includes the, that includes the owners as well. They, they clearly want to make things better, different, and don't want to be tied to a model that is broken. So my expectations were of average, and you've exceeded those expectations. Uh, it's, it's such a lovely phrase. It's such a lovely phrase. In a world where we've become process-driven, product-centred, solutions providers, all horrible phrases and words, in a world where that's become the norm, we've forgotten people. And so to make anything mainstream again, you have to be radical. We can't be gently human. We need to be radically human. So for me, radically human means putting people at the centre of your organisation, because that's who generates the ideas. And within creative agencies, people are often seen as collateral damage. Don't worry, we can buy some more great brains. No. Get a great brain, keep it, grow it, nurture it, and it'll be greater. So that's the first part of, of, of radical um, human. The second part is the way you treat clients. So you treat them with respect, you treat them how you'd want to be treated. But that, with that comes a responsibility upon the client to not ask for free pitches, to not, not tie you down on price or, or, or beat you up on, on price. And to treat you with respect and your ideas with respect and to listen, thoughtfully to listen to you. Because the radically human approach will bring greater benefit to them but the need to stop thinking in, in the old way. That's the, the key thing. And I guess there's something, a third thing about Radically Human, that's to do with seeing a bigger picture. Seeing a picture that involves people at the centre of the planet, rather than just people to sell stuff to. Your money is your most powerful thing as a consumer. And you want to do the right thing with that money. You don't just want to buy products, you want to buy emotions, you want to buy someone that you think is doing the right thing. And that's not everyone, some people just want the cheapest stuff that they can buy. But increasingly we're seeing a movement from cheap stuff to good stuff, from buying twice to buying once and buying well, from buying products to buying a service, from buying a thing to buying into a club and to a pursuit. And that radically human speaks of all of that. So I think it's, it's a gift for, for me. So I come into an organisation looking for a concept. 
you have a name, you have a concept. It's very easy for us to build to build on that. So I think radically human is the way to, the way that you have to grow. It's the only way that you that you will grow, it, and and retain respect. Okay, we 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 face a number of difficulties as a as a population. Um, and the first of those is to do with food and water, to do with getting enough food and water. We have a lot of food, we waste 50% of it between the field and the fork. So I focus something around being much more efficient with the way that we harvest, prepare and sell food. And this is difficult because we, we often see things like packaging as a problem, Actually, it might be a solution. It might be the way that we make food last longer. Water also, when you think that we flush our toilets with water that we drink. In fact, this is a really interesting German issue. Sat in a restaurant for the last two nights drinking bottled water. We don't do that in, in the UK. We did to six months, a year ago. We now demand tap water. Not because it's cheap free, but because it's the right thing to do ecologically. That hasn't happened in Germany yet. We flush our toilets with water that we can drink and we drink water that we've shipped across the country. That's crazy. That's just wrong. So something around food and drink and affordability would be awesome. What I love about Germany is I love, and this is going to sound slightly abstract, I love its banking system. I love the way it supports medium-sized businesses and grows family businesses, and they tend to be manufacturers. And if, we, if I could reinvent that banking system in the UK, that's, that's where I'd go. That's, that's the biggest problem that we have in the UK. In the world, it's, it's food and water. Of course, religious conflict as well, but I'm not going to go into that discussion. I love it. I drank two types of beer and I can't remember the name. Eight beer I had last night, so that's the darker beer, which is from this area, yeah. Um, it tasted, <laughs> this is going to sound really bad, it tasted like a British beer that wasn't flat or warm enough for my liking, but um, it, was, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I also had another beer, whichever one, the La Blonde beer the, the, the night before, which was also brilliant. What I liked about both of them is that the glasses were small, so they, stayed, they did stay cold. You know, frankly, if you call gasoline to a low enough temperature, it'll taste fantastic, which is why I like a warmer beer, because you get a different taste. But the smaller glass helped enormously. Um, and regional beers are really important. You go to somewhere like the States, and you're, and you're, you're met with a schizophrenic world. You're met with a world that, that serves Bud Light at the bar, yeah, dreadful, but a world that is enjoying an explosion of craft brewers. The worst and the best of the world in one, in, in one country. What I love about this, this town, this city, is that when I went out the first night and was given the beer that wasn't the local beer, someone apologised, said, I'm really sorry, it's not the local beer. That's great, that's fine, I'm drinking it, but I want the local beer tomorrow night. But that pride, that sense of Dusseldorfianness. <laughs> it's just brilliant. And you don't get that in many places. Beer was great, company was great. The company here is exciting. The opportunities for you are, are massive. You can re remake what you do. Um, and we uncovered 16 new business ideas, allowing for a bit of overlap. We might end up with a dozen, 12 business ideas in two days. And each one of them made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Great day's work, great two days' work. <laughs>